In this episode, I'm going to make a little wooden business card holder. It's a fairly simple design and is basically just two identical shaped pieces of wood glued together to form a sleeve. And as with all of my videos, it's purely for entertainment, but I'll go through the different steps in detail to show you how I made it. First thing to do was to design the vector. I opened up Vetric and selected Create a New File. Job type is single sided, job size is 150mm by 150mm, and it'll be 7mm thick. Z0 is the material surface and XY datum position is in the centre at 0, 0. Now I'm not too concerned about modelling resolution, so I just now click OK. Now I'm using a spire which allows layers, but I wanted to create the vector in such a way that if your software doesn't have layers, you can still make this. So I've put this together in a way that's slightly different than I normally make it, but the end result is still the same. The first thing that I'm going to do is create the outside shape. You may need to make adjustments to the sizes to fit your own business cards in, as I designed this using my own cards as reference, but the overall process is still the same. To create the shape, I'm going to start with a rectangle. I go to Create Vectors and click Draw Rectangle. My anchor point is highlighted in the middle. I make sure that X and Y is zero. Corner type will be square and width and height for mine is 95mm and 64mm respectively. Then I press create to place a rectangle and close the box. To create the shape portion that allows easy access to the cards, I use the draw circle function. That's under create vectors and draw circle. I made the diameter 24mm. To place a circle vector, I went over to the rectangle I placed earlier and lined the cursor up so it was on the right hand side edge, which for me was 47.5 for X and Y was 0, and press the left mouse button. Then I close the circle vector box and clicked away from the circle to deselect it. Now the design was ok but I wanted less of a circle for the part where you'd pull the business card out, so I moved the circle across by 1mm by first selecting the circle, then going to transform objects and move the selected objects. X showed 47.5, so I simply changed it to 48.5, which moves it ever so slightly when I clicked apply. Now I was happy with that, so I closed the box and deselected the circle by clicking on screen somewhere just by pressing escape. Now to complete the outside vector of the holder, I just needed to trim away the parts that I didn't need. I did this by going to edit objects and selecting the interactive trim tool. I made sure that rejoin trim sectors automatically when form is closed is ticked, which saves me having to rejoin everything later. Then I just removed the portions that I didn't need by hovering over them and clicking the left mouse button. Then the box is closed and I select the vector to make sure it's all one piece. So I was happy with that, so I deselect the vector and now I need to make the inside of the holder. This needs to be right or the cards just won't fit inside properly, but I've taken measurements and I'm confident with my calculations, so all I need to do is create the vector which I do by going to Create Vectors and selecting Draw Rectangle. It'll be a similar setup to before, but if I just create the rectangle in the middle, it's going to leave walls that aren't even, so I know that by having X as 2.0 and Y as 0.0, it'll shift the vectors across, line it to the right side and create a wall of even thickness but making sure the size that I use is 91mm by 56mm. Pressing create places the new vector on the slate. So now we have two vectors on the screen which we can select independently. This will give us our two halves which we could just cut and glue together. The problem is that gluing them up can be tricky because the two pieces want to move when they're clamped. So to make the glue up process much easier I'm going to add some plastic guide pins. The pins I'm going to use are the dots that you can buy for the side of the neck on guitars. The holes I need to make are just 1.6mm diameter, you could probably get away with 2 or 3, but I wanted to see how accurate my CNC would cut so I placed down 7. There's various ways to set these pinholes, but an easy way that I found was to use guidelines. By pressing the left mouse button inside the ruler, I can drag a guide to the edge of the vector and look at the coordinates. I can then drag it to the inside of the rectangle and look at the coordinates. I saw that the difference was 4mm, so all I had to do is place the guide halfway between those two coordinates by dragging it into position and releasing the mouse. I can right click the mouse to check it's in the correct position and adjust if need be. Then it's just a case of adding some more guides. When all the guides are in place, it shows me where the center points are to place a circle vector and something to easily snap to. So I go back to create vectors and select the draw circle. I need to make sure that I've typed in 1.6mm for the diameter. 
Now all I have to do is move across to each reference guide and click the left mouse button to place a circle vector. I could place a couple and copy them by using mirror, but as long as you keep an eye on the coordinates when you place the vectors down, this works just as well. Once I've finished I click close and deselect the vectors. To make the tool pass easier, I'm going to group the circles by clicking them one by one and holding down shift. Once they're all selected, I just press G to group them. To make this layer easier to see, I hide the guides by going to View, Guidelines and clicking Guides Visible. So that's the vectors done, so now it's onto the toolpaths. Clicking on the item at the top takes us to the toolpath window. And because everyone uses different cutters and machining methods, I'm not going to go into depth with my setup. So basically to create the pinholes, I use a 0.6mm end mill cutter that I bought online and cut to a depth of 2mm using the pocket hole function. For the inner rectangle, I used an end mill that came with my CNC which is 3.175mm diameter and using the pocket toolpath again, I cut to a depth of 3.5mm which is half the depth of the material. To cut the piece out, I used a profile pass with the same cutter which keeps cutter swapping at a minimum and added tabs to prevent the piece flying off the machine and the end result looks like this. Now on the CNC you can see the 0.6mm end mill doing its job. And then I switch to the 3.175mm cutter. I carefully remove the tabs which left me with two identical looking pieces. The plastic rod that I use for the guitar side markers is ideal for using as pins to line up the two halves. Then it's just a case of doing a test fit and making sure that the business card fits. To glue the two halves together I used some Starbond instant glue, which Starbond had sent me to try out on some of my projects. After a quick sanding I did some careful rail trim and it was job done. I've made a few of these in the past and experimented with different wood combinations. And you can even engrave them using cutters or laser your own logo onto them. 